All right. Okay, good morning. Welcome everyone to the course uh, BC314 on uh, media and technology in ministry. Uh, we are in this section, we'll be talking about technology platforms or software platforms that different platforms that we can use for church and ministry work. And I'm just giving us an overview of uh, how uh, we are using different uh, platforms, and many of these are open source platforms. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, it, it'll be useful. You may have an opportunity to use these as well. Let's pray. Uh, we'll get started, and then uh, I'll share a few things today that uh, might be useful. Okay. Um, yeah, May Kanan, can you pray? Uh, if you just pray with us, please. Yeah, I, I will pray. Yeah, uh, Father Lord, I thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Lord, um, thank you for the subject, Lord. Lord, uh, help everyone join on time, Lord. Lord, uh, give us a good connectivity, Lord. Lord, uh, I pray for your, uh, uh, pray that you give us a good uh, knowledge and uh, understanding, Lord, about the subject, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So, um, yesterday, uh, when we were talking about uh, software systems, technology platforms that we could use, um, I shared, first of all, about the church management system and uh, how we, we can do a lot of different things. And that is, be, that is used to manage data of people, um, whether it's congregation members or donors or partners, things like that. You're managing their data. Then I also shared about the human resource management software. Uh, the product that we are using is a free open source product, Orange HRM. And we use that to, that is to manage internally, right? To manage your staff, your consultants, people are working for the church or Christian ministry. You can use that. Um, we use it, you know, to report our time, uh, our work, uh, um, to apply for leaves, uh, for performance review, it can be used for performance review. Um, and we're also uh, getting going to use it for um, expenses and reimbursements. So that means if people are spending money on behalf of the church, they make some purchases which are you know, approved, uh, then they can submit their expense claim and they get reimbursed for those expenses because they've bought something for the church or the ministry uh, that's been approved of. So like that, you know, it, the, the human resource management software is used internally to manage your staff, your work, people are working for the organization, and it's always good. So if you look at it right now, uh, because, you know, I, I guess because of partly because of the pandemic, uh, the last, uh, ever since the pandemic started, uh, that's a, uh, early 2020 is when we went into lockdown. So oh, two years almost, uh, you know, we didn't come to the office. We The office was closed. Uh, everybody's working from home only for, you know, brief moments. And then I think office opened up fully, more or less fully uh, from earlier this year, right? So we actually didn't get a chance to meet uh, all our staff and, to physically meet and plus uh, pe people are in diff yeah, diff different places and we also have people who are working from different parts of India as consultants doing work. So we, we are not meeting each other. Uh, we have to, you know, somehow we have to still manage pe you know, people and their work and so on. And so that's why having a, a software system like the human resource management system uh, can we can we can manage all our staff and consultants from anywhere right so uh, uh, you know there, there are more than I think uh, I don't know the exact number but more than 60 to 70 people uh, who get paid every month uh, there are so half of them are staff that is they get salaries and another half are consultants. They get paid hourly. So whatever hours they work, they get paid. So, you know, we have about 60 to 70 people every month. They have to be paid. 
and it happens through this HRM portal as they report the times, everything, timesheet, they work, everything is processed every month and they are paid. So it's possible to do it, even though, you know, we're all in different places uh, around the country, it's possible to manage that, okay? So now I'm going to today, uh, I hope we'll cover one or two other systems. The next system I want to talk about is uh, content management system, content management system, which is what we use to build our websites. So our websites, so right now we, uh, when I say we, uh, All People's Church has about, uh, has six websites that it is managing and it is building, okay? Uh, some of these are more, more, developed than others, some are still being developed. Uh, but uh, each website is serving a particular purpose. And uh, we had to make a decision on, you know, how to build these websites. Now, there are many ways that you can build a website. Uh, at a very basic level, you could you just use, you know, plain HTML pages, you can have a website with that, have a HTML JavaScript technology in. But there are what are referred to as content management systems. And uh, many of these are free open source systems, software systems that people generally use today to build websites. The advantage with that is you don't need to know a lot of programming or you don't need to I mean, yeah, you, you do need to know a little bit of the programming, but you don't need to do a lot of the programming, right? You just do a little bit, but the system is more or less packaged, built for you. So you kind of just set it up the way you want it. You know, what pages do you want? What are the menus you want on your website? And those kind of things. So it lets you manage things easy. So the goal is more on you providing the content rather than trying to build the system. You know, so it saves uh, people a lot of time. Now, there are many good content management systems. Um, one, uh, but the one that we are using is Joomla. And I will just, I will show you, I will put the website as well on in the document when I give to you at the end. It's a very good content, man, content management system, a very robust, used worldwide. Uh, so we you, we are using that. We we decided to use that same system for all our websites because then you know it's very easy to manage. You just need people who understand it and they can configure it or set it up for all the different websites. Now Joomla is an open source product. You can download it, and then it has many extensions. That means you can add various features to it. And the extensions are paid purchases. You buy you buy it once for some amount, and then you plug it in to the core product. The core product is free. Joomla it comes with certain features, more than enough to set up a website. But if you want additional plugins, you can buy it, or they call it plugins or extensions. You can buy it, put it into the system, and you can build your system. Uh, so it's a very easy thing to do. And you just, if you know, if you have people, volunteers in your church uh, or IT people, who are willing to help, you just tell them, you know, hey, download Joomla. We're going to set up our website in jo using Joomla. Uh, they need to know basic PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and the databases, MySQL. So if they know that, they can, most, most, you know, developers today, IT people today are familiar with these programming languages. So they'll be able to set it up for you. You just tell them what you want, you know, what do you want on the website? And they will be able to set it up very easily for you. So it, the work can happen very fast. So that's one advantage. And, you know, we are updating our web, many of our websites are being updated on a daily basis, daily basis. So uh, that makes it, it makes that work very easy. Right? Content is being put out every day. For example, every day we have a daily devotional video it's called uh, Living Supernaturally. A five-minute video, devotional video, is being updated into our website every day. And uh, so uh, 
you know, and, and the number of weekly sermons are uh, being updated. And uh, uh, so, sorry, I'm just writing something down. Okay, so that 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 also happens. And so these big daily updates, a lot of things. You know, it's very easy to manage it when you're using a content management system. Right. So today, I just want to give you an idea about it, and uh, some of the things is when you are building a website and when you are putting content out there, one, well, one important thing is that it should be searchable. See, it's one thing to put content out there, but the, the fact is there are millions, I would maybe, I guess, uh, millions of websites, or if you look at it from a Christian church, at least there will be hundreds of thousands of church websites all over the world. And uh, everybody is putting some content out there. You know, nowadays, it's very common for churches and ministries to put out their sermons and uh, maybe their books and whatever resources, right? So hundreds of thousands all over the world. Uh, so if you put out content, it has to be visible, right? That means it has to come up when people are searching for certain content. Uh, what you put out has to be searchable uh, and it should come up when people search so that they find it and then they can come and use the content. So that making content searchable, again, it becomes easier when you use a content management system, right? It makes it easier to do that. And I will just share some thoughts on it, right? So let me share my screen and uh, share, share a few things here. So first of all, let's uh, look at the product that we were talking about. We're talking about Joomla. This is um, the uh, content uh, management uh, product that we were talking about, right? Joomla. And it's a flexible platform. It enables us to create our websites. It's a free open source product. So you can just download it. And either you can host it or, you know, uh, there are website uh, provide service providers who will host it for you. And uh, you know, it's, it's being used all over the world by people. And, uh, you know, some of its features, like I mentioned, it's search engine friendly. So whatever you do, you know, can you can set it up in a way that's searchable. And nowadays, very important, uh, you know, people access the internet a lot from their mobile phone. So the website should be, you know, mobile friendly, it should render properly on uh, on mobile phone. So even though we design something for a laptop, so right now I'm looking at it, looking at things from my laptop, but many people access websites from their phone. So it should be mobile friendly. Uh, it should give you a lot of flexibility if needed. You know, you, you can present your website with many in different languages. Uh, of course, uh, do a lot of designs. You can extend it, add uh, a lot of additional features easily and uh, different you know give give different users especially those who are managing the website different levels of access so you know they can access it and so on so this is a product we're using this is what i would also recommend for you if you're thinking about setting up a website for your church or your ministry now this is not the only content management system there are others like uh, there's another product called drupal which is also well uh, what to say, uh, well-known or used commonly. There is, of course, WordPress, which is also used for website development or content management. Uh, but this it was our choice uh, simply because we felt it was, you know, for, from our perspective, it was the best option for us. So all our websites, uh, our APC, 
website, church website, our Bible college. Oops, let me let me open these in different tabs. Our Bible college website also uses Joomla. Our church website uses Joomla. Uh, we have uh, other websites that we are working on. Uh, for uh, uh, you know that we are you know building it into so they're all basically everything is running on Joomla, right? So when you're creating your website, obviously the first thing you want to think about is what are the main menus you want to have. Typically, you'll have something called home so that people click on it, they come back to the home page. Uh, you will have something called about us, uh, which where you can give some information about yourself, about the church. You know, so we have things about about the church. Then uh, you can have things about the ministries that you're doing. Uh, you can have things about events that are coming up or you can have things about resources that you're making available. Uh, and in our case, we are highlighting our books and missions here, and then uh, other websites that, that we maintain. And of course, we also have a Hindi version of the website. So typically you'd have your home, you have about us, you'd have ministries, resources, and contact. You know, your church office, your church locations, and so on. So you tell somebody, you know, I want all this to be set up for me they will be able to do it very easily. Then you can decide, you know, how you want your page to look like. So uh, I'm not saying this has, everybody has to do it like this. I'm just saying this is how we did it. That, uh, you know, we have, we highlight our sermon because that's something many people would want to come for. Uh, the, we highlight our daily devotional so people can just come here and listen to the daily devotional. Of course, the dev devotional is available on the church app. It's available on social media, on YouTube and Facebook. But here's another place, right? And these are the events that are coming up. So this is what is, you know, uh, coming up. Uh, we put out testimonies so people can see that, okay, God is working. God is doing something. Um, we highlight other things like, okay, there are free Christian books. Uh, but generally, people want to know. These are commonly things that people want to know, you know. So we highlight that here and, uh, you know. So some things about the church and so on. So you can decide how you want to lay things out and uh, make make things available like that. Mm -hmm. So all of this, you know, um, so this is our website. I just want to highlight some things here. You see, one of the things is uh, sermons. Now, sermons are a very important part of a church, especially, right? So what we've done is all our sermons from 2004. So, you know, so we say sermons from 2004. So we're talking about, about 18 years of sermons are available through this website. You know, so uh, all our Sunday sermons since 2004. And of course, they're listed chronologically uh, uh, here. So they can come in. They can listen, they can watch, download notes, everything. So people can uh, make use, you know, if they missed a sermon, they want to go back and listen to a sermon, they can come in. And so this is all from 2004, it's available here. But of course, uh, you want people to be able to quickly access, filter this. So they can filter by the person who preached or they can uh, filter by series, you know, what was the, the series that is used or which year they can go back and they can filter by any one of these things. So that's, you know, one way. So they can either just go chronologically and listen. They can, you can do anything, listen, watch the sermon. The other thing we've also done is we've given a page where we list the sermon series very easily. Right. So somebody could come to this page and they can say, oh, these are all the sermon series that were done. Uh, I, I, I want to listen to something here. You know, if somebody wants to listen about the holiness of God or the mighty name of Jesus or the presence of God, they can click on any of these and uh, it will take them to this page where just the sermons on that series are listed. They can download it and use it. Right. So. This is something you can easily do. It's almost like a library of sermons. 
uh, people can come and do it. So this is a big advantage yeah, of using of using uh, a content management system. And all of this can be managed very easily through the administration of this system. Right? Similarly, the daily devotionals, right? So uh, we have uh, our daily devotional, uh, which is available. Uh, so every day's devotional, uh, it's being released here. Similarly, we have these series available, you know, because these all these devotions are done on weekly themes. And uh, if somebody wants to go and look at it, uh, okay, what are all the topics? So, so these are all the themes. So if somebody feels like today, you know, I want to listen to something about uh, about Jesus or about the added beatitudes or believers authority, or uh, I want to listen about resolving conflicts. So they can come and they can click here and they will get, you know, these seven devotionals on these seven devotionals from Monday to Saturday, Sunday to Saturday are on resolving conflicts. How do you resolve conflicts? So they can actually go through this devotional uh, as, as and when they feel, right? So again, all the devotions are listed by the themes and anybody can come and choose a theme and they can listen listen to yeah, the devotionals, uh, which are very short five minute devotionals um, on, on, the, on the theme, right? So, uh, so uh, again, all of this is managed very easily. Another thing is about the books. Again, here, the books. So the books are listed here. And uh, many of these books, of course, they're all in PDF form. Uh, we will slowly bring out other formats. But many of these books are also available as audiobooks. So you can download the whole book as an audiobook, as an MP3. And if people don't want to read the PDF, they can listen to the book uh, in audio form. So audiobooks are also available. And uh, and uh, books will come out in other formats as well. So the books are listed here very you know very easily for them. Now all this is searchable. It means you know we've put it here, but if somebody uh, searches, you know, um, and I think I've shown this to you, but let's say if if somebody searches for um, sermons on, yeah, maybe let's say women in the workplace. I don't know if it'll show up. Uh, so these are sermons by other people, but okay, we don't have, I don't think we have a sermon, sermons on women in the workplace. Uh, okay, so here's our book, Women in the Workplace. So our book, Women in the Workplace, uh, on Google has, has shown up. Um, anyway, let me just, let's see if uh, sermons on, uh, uh, what I have, uh, something that we'll pick up from our website. Uh, uh, right. okay, so I'm doing a Google search. Of course, I've done it purposely on, on, on the name of that sermon, The Redemptive Heart of God. And you see the first in the search list is our, is our sermon. Now, now, just think about this. There are about 8,087,000 results that match with this search string so on The Redemptive Heart of God. But that particular sermon from APC is listed first. Now, of course, it's because uh, Google search also looks at your location, you know, where are you from? And it, 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 it kind of brings all these together from different locations. So obviously it recognizes, you know, it will know that I'm watching, I'm doing this from India and so on. But that sermon series that we have put out on our website is listed first. So, you know, if somebody searches sermons on uh, receiving, yeah, if we receiving God's guide, receiving God's guidance, 
So there is a sermon here on receiving God's care at Sermon Central. Uh, that's, uh, you know, a, a repository, online repository of sermons. But then here you see the sermon from EPC listed number two, right? So, uh, of course, I'm searching by these names, but the sermons here. But what, what a, the point I want to make is the sermons that we have made available through our church website um, here, the sermon series, right, is searchable. Right? So it, it shows up in Google search. So people can, uh, you know, will, will find it online when they do search by certain topics. And if that topic is available on uh, our website and uh, if, if it's ranked high, it will show up on you know, the early pages and um, they can then, you know, when they click on it, of course, they'll come and they will be able to, you know, listen to these sermons, et cetera. Right? So making what you put out searchable is very important so that people can come and see. So similarly, you know, uh, when people search for daily devotions, uh, they search for books, um, a, a lot of our content is searchable and they will find it and they will come and uh, use it. And I will show you uh, when we look at the search results, uh, we can see people from around the world uh, coming to our website and using uh, the content. But let's look at the back end, that is the administrator side of things. You know, similarly about the Bible College, I will we will talk about it a little later. But how is what does a back end look like? Um, so, um, you know, if uh, as an administrator you log in uh, uh, and uh, right, so uh, this is the administrator site. So this is where you know we are able to manage um, um, these things. Now I just want to show you a few things here. So we have uh, um, a preach it extension. This is where all our messages and series uh, sermons are are uh, managed. So this is the back end to what you saw on the website. Right. So this is where uh, these things are uploaded, and uh, you know the details are given. So these are all the recent ones. So this is where we manage them, and uh, you know you can manage. Uh, you upload your uh, uh, the message, and uh, you give it all the details, and uh, it's it's so it's easy. You don't have to do a lot of programming. You can just upload it here. You can set up the series here. You know these are all the series that we um, have been and the, you saw on the series page of the uh, website. Uh, it's all these sermon series. So all these are the series and these are actually uh, managed through this preach it component where we set up the series, give it some information and you know all of that. So all of this is being managed very easily uh, you know from the back end. Similarly about the books. So if you this is the control panel of, for the books. Uh, this is where all the books are managed and uh, it's giving you, uh, you know, um, um, tells us, you know, how these books are being downloaded. So about 500, almost 540,000 uh, uh, times uh, these these books have been downloaded, uh, in, in, in so on, and and then you can go in and you can see uh, books by various categories. Of course, this is German and so on. But let's see if we look at these books in English. So these are the English books, and you can see you know each book uh, how many times it was downloaded. Uh, people have downloaded these books 
and uh, and uh, you can see them right so uh, Holy Spirit 5000 to 279 so on. and some of these are not publicly available so these are you have to look at only these numbers yeah uh, so you know you can see this book is downloaded quite often around 8000 downloads so on so this is where we manage the books and the books is what we are seeing here you know these english books right so all these books um, these are actually managed by here this page right and you can manage how you lay it out and you can see what is happening how many downloads and so on right so um setting up you know, so this is the you know the back end. This is where an IT person uh, would work. Uh, he would use your IT person. He or she would uh, use this back end to set up the website for you. And you can just tell them, you know, this is what I want. Uh, this is what I want to make available, and they would use the back end. So you see, the back end is pretty straightforward. It's it's a web page, uh, and you can upload things, and you can manage things here uh, from the back end uh, and so on, right? Okay, so I just wanted to give you a quick uh, exposure to that. So this is how our website is set up. Now, similarly, uh, Bible College website, very much similar. There's a back end to it. And then you can tell the you know your person saying, look, this is what we want uh, and it'll show up. And Again, everything is made searchable. So, for instance, if we say online Bible college, you know, so there are, if you search for online Bible college, of course, there are oh, so many, more than uh, 14 million, I guess, Bible colleges. You see a lot of these advertisements here from different foreign Bible colleges. Um, and then you see APC Bible College on page one, you know, it's listed here. So, so our Bible College website is searchable, or if people search on, um, you know, uh, uh, online Bible colleges in India, uh, then ours is listed right on top uh, after University of Mysore and so on. But these two are ads, so these are paid positions. But this is APC Bible College, you know, ranked uh, right up high. So. You can make your Bible college searchable. You can uh, uh, make it searchable by, you know, people search by various uh, criteria. I don't know if we will show up here for free Bible college. Oh yeah, it does come up here as APC Bible college. If people search for free Bible colleges in India, our e-learning we offer for free, so they come. So the Bible college website is searchable and, you know, by different criteria as well. And it's all done the same way. It's using Joomla, uh, the backend, and uh, it, you, know, you add the titles and so on, and it makes the whole website searchable. People can come and so, uh, may, you know, look at the website. All right, so today what we've done is, or what I, what I very briefly shared with us is about Joomla, which is a content management system which we use to set up our website. And we can also make, sorry, we can make resources available through our website in a very, uh, in a well-managed way. That is your sermons, your books, uh, your blogs. You know, you can add a blog to this uh, so that um, you can, you know, post articles. So many things, many, many things can be done. We, you know, I've just showed you very briefly a few of the things that can be done. And very importantly, you can make your content searchable. So when you use the content management system, you know, you put in the right tags, you put in the right keywords uh, and so on. And then your, the, your content becomes searchable so that when people search on Google or some other search engines, uh, they will be able to find what you have put out and they will come to it and make use of it. 
Okay, so keep this in mind, uh, especially when you are planning to set up a website uh, for your church or your ministry. Uh, think about using a content management system, something like Joomla. You could use Joomla, it's free. Uh, tell your IT person or any volunteer to set it up on Joomla. And uh, you can tell them, you know, what you want. And you can tell them, look, I want to make all the sermons available. I want to make, uh, you know, maybe you're planning to write books. or Maybe you're planning to write articles, blogs. You can just set up a blog as well. They can do it easily for you. And uh, they can manage it for you. Okay. So we'll pause here for today. Uh, we will pick this up again next week. I will talk to you more about other um, software systems and um, other other products that you can use for your church, for your ministry. But a website and a content management system for a website is, is I think, I would say very important or very crucial for any church or ministry. And uh, we can be thankful that these days we do have uh, you know, very easy ways to set it up and uh, to be up and running. Okay, any any questions, any thoughts? Okay, so let's let's pause here for today. I mean, there's a lot more we could talk about, but and I just want to introduce these things to you so you could make use of them. Uh, we will continue this next week. And uh, I will give you a little document with just the names of all these products that we're talking about so that in the future, I mean, you have an opportunity, you can use that as a list. You can look and say, hey, I want to use this product. And uh, you know, you'll, be, you'll be ready to do it. You'll know what to use uh, for different needs. Okay. All right. Um, let's close in prayer and then we'll dismiss. May I ask uh, maybe Thomas, if, you, if it, it's okay, you could pray and dismiss us. Sure. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the learnings what we have learned today. Father, we love you and praise you. Father, let all what we learn, let we be useful for the kingdom of God's advancement. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this time. We bless you, Daddy. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the afternoon and the weekend. Have a blessed weekend. I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank Bye you. Now. Thank you.